Recently, Charger Lab got the Alienware 240W scan charger, which is suitable for M15 Ryzen Edition R5 laptop. The charger design is traditional, but it integrates a GAN chip of GAN systems, so the size is pretty small. Then let's tear off the plastic film. We can see it comes with the DC connector and the AC power cord. The surface is matted and it can be comfortably held. The Alienware logo is on the front and the nameplate is on the back. Model is LA240PM200. It supports input of 100 to 120 volts 3.5 amp, 200 to 240 volts 2.5 amp, and output of 19.5 volts 12.31 amp, 240 watts. We can also see lots of certification marking on the upper left corner, so it can be used globally. Just replace the AC power cord. There is a three-prong interface on the top of the voltage converter, and the DC power cord is fixed on the groove of the other side. The DC connector has an LED light ring, and its length is about 176 cm. And then the length of the converter is 152 mm, which is 78 mm, and the thickness is 23 mm. The weight of the converter and the DC cord is 577 grams, and the total weight is 658 grams. The plug adopts US standards, and the other side is 3 prong port. The length of the AC power cord is 91 cm. Compared with Dell 90 watts power adapter, the design looks very similar, but the output power of Alienware charger is 2.7 times higher than Dell charger. Thanks to the GAN technology, the size is just slightly bigger. There is an adapter cable which can easily convert DC to USB-C. Use Charger Lab Power Z KT002 to test it. It just supports PD2 protocol and has two fixed PDOs of 5 volts 1.5 amp and 20 volts 3.25 amp which means it can support 65 watts PD fast charging after converting to USB-C. But when we test it with mainstream mobile phones, it can only support 5 volts and the power is about 10 watts. Try to charge MacBook Pro. Okay, it can support 20 volts this time. Next, let's go ahead to tear it down. Three output wires are protected by insulating tube. The larger heatsink is covered on the PCB module to enhance heat dissipation performance. The insulating tape is attached to the output side of the heatsink. The heat sinks are fixed by clips and soldering. This heat sink is covered with a black insulating plate. Both the front and back sides are completely covered by thick thermal pads. Okay, after cleaning up, let's see what's inside. 
the ground wire across the primary and secondary sides. The conductive fabric is attached to the top of the transformer and PFC boost inductor. There are sufficient gaps between the components to effectively avoid overheating. The specs of time delay fuse are 250 volts, 4 amp, and there are two common mode chokes used to filter out EMI interference. The safety X capacitor comes from HJC 0.47 microfarad. This is the rectifier bridge model is LT1B03. The specs of those two filter capacitors is 450 volts. The filter inductor is also covered with insulating tape. Two diodes are on the small PCB, which is soldered vertically on the side of the main PCB. There is a rectifier controller and two rectifier MOSFETs on the other side. And the light on logo is printed on the small PCB. This is the full wave active bridge rectifier controller we just mentioned, which comes from NXP TEA2208T. It can effectively eliminate the typical rectifier diode forward conduction losses when used with MOSFET. It also integrates X capacitor discharge. Those two rectifier MOSFETs come from Infineon IPL60R180P6, 650 volts, 180 milliohm. The blue one is a resonant capacitor. Let's see the other side. An electrolytic capacitor is placed horizontally in here. There is a small PCB with heat sink next to it, which can effectively control the temperature. Let's take a closer look at this small PCB. There is a GAN FAT, 650 volts, 50 milliohm, used for PFC boost. It comes from GAN Systems GS-065-030-2-1 which is an enhancement mode GAN on silicon power transistor with the properties of high current, high voltage breakdown and high switching frequency. And it's suitable for high power density products. The PFC boost rectifier diode comes from WIN BYV10ED-600P. Here is the PFC boost inductor. The specs of Chinsen electrolytic capacitor are 450 volts, 180 microfarad. And the mass control chip is the customized model marked with LTA1902T. It supports PFC boost and LLC control. Those two high voltage switching MOSFETs come from Infineon IPL60R180P6. There is some information on the side of the transformer, which is also from Lighton. Next, let's look at the output side. Those two 1007 optocouplers are used to regulate output voltage. Here is an Y capacitor. The specs of this Chinsen electrolytic capacitors is 25 volts, 100 microfarad. And the other one is 35 volts, 220 microfarad. LLC synchronous rectify controller is also the customized model, which can control two MOSFETs marked with LTA1716. Those two Infineon MOSFETs are used for LLC synchronous rectification, 60 volts, 2.8 milliohm. The USB PD controller on the secondary side comes from Angbol OB2613. But this charger didn't use the PD port go function of this chip. It realized the power identification and overvoltage protection function through the building memory. The specs of four solid capacitors for output filtering is 25 volts, 330 microfarad. Well, that will be all components of this Alienware 240 watts GAN charger. Thanks to the GAN chip of GAN systems, it can be relatively small under the traditional style. In addition, it has passed lots of certifications, so the quality is reliable. But it only supports two PDOs of PD particle and needs to use the adapter cable. So its compatibility is not very good. Okay, that's all for today's video. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to us. And you can also leave your comments about this charger. See you in the next video. Bye.